Monkeys are frisky. I don't know if you guys have ever like interacted with wild monkeys out in the wild. Um, honestly, on this stream, we've seen and encountered monkeys before, of course. It's quite normal, but um, we got lucky, I think. So far, we've gotten lucky. Um, so we're gonna ease our way into Monkey City. No, I think tomorrow will be the more risky day, Chogi. Today we're not gonna really go to the main monkey temple, but um, we're just gonna like look around uh, the city and kind of get our bearings today. So today is like, today is tutorial mode, <laughs> tutorial chapter of Monkey City and then Tomorrow we go into the actual gameplay. So, yeah, please mods, please sharpen your ban hammers. <laughs> Whack away the monkeys if they start climbing on you guys. <laughs> it's another very hot day today. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, It's it's been insanely hot the last few days. Yesterday I couldn't really handle the heat properly. I had showered twice. I just sort of was in bed on the aircon for most of the day, like between going out here and there. But it was just one of those days where just I was so tired. And I think from the heat exhaustion of the day before, I got a sunburn. So, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. Well, today should be more chill. Uh, today should be chill, so I think we'll be okay. <laughs> uh, um, and yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys are excited for today. I, I know I am. Like I said, I'm slightly nervous. <laughs> it was yesterday, uh, not yesterday, Sunday was a really long day in the sun. It really hit me. And I don't think we've really had a, a day like that for a while. Even in Singapore, I feel like we were able to sort of seek shade more often. Like being out in the ruins, you know, like it's just... Yeah, we were super exposed to the sun. And Thank you, Randy. Tea. Welcome, guys. Yeah, just in time. Uh, we're just chilling with coffee at first and then uh, today is all about travel. Today is a, a travel stream, a travel-based stream. We're en route today. So the main part of our afternoon is catching that train up to Monkey City. Um, so we've got a couple of hours to kill still in Ayutthaya. So I figured maybe we could go visit one last ruin. Because like Sunday, we only did the, these two main ones, but there's several around, right? But we really do need to keep track of time chat. So my plan and another, it's another day where you guys are going to have to help, like spam that time command in chat so you guys help me keep track of time. Um, I want to get back to the hotel at around 2.20 so we can have a, t a little moment for a pee break if we need to, probably should. Pee break and then get on that tuk tuk to the train station. Yeah. <laughs> have I been to Cambodia and Japan? Yes to both. Haven't, have not streamed Cambodia, but we've streamed Japan a few times. Um, but I've been personally, I've been to both countries. Yes. Monkeys are vicious. They destroyed my grandma's orchard's shed. She rage quit the orchard. Oh no, I'm so sorry. <gasps> That's horrible. They are really feisty, really, really vicious little cheeky guys. When we first started traveling Thailand, um, <laughs> when we first started traveling pa uh, th Thailand, we were like, oh yeah, I want to see the monkeys. I want to meet monkeys. Where are they? Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And we met some monkeys and saw monkeys who were like, oh yeah, they're so cute. They're so sweet. I don't get why people hate them. Over the years being in Thailand, we were like, oh, okay, now I get it. <laughs> now I understand. <laughs> they were swinging on the pots. Oh my God. Have I ever thought about traveling Pakistan? 
to totally down uh, to travel Pakistan like that area in general that like that part of the world like India Pakistan and Sri Lanka and stuff like I, I do want to go back and travel properly and, and I don't know how like the thing is these days because we stream our life full-time stream our travels full-time it kind of limits on the parts of the world we can travel to because we rely on good infrastructure right we need to make sure we can stream our, our travels so we went into India a few years ago <laughs> and it was a big fail because the infrastructure was just not strong enough to have good stream Technically, on paper, India has fantastic 4G infrastructure, but the problem is there are millions of people using the f infrastructure simultaneously. So it gets bad because it's just it's too congested, basically. You know, so we need to wait for something, uh, something to change, so that we can go back to India and do the trip that we were actually hoping to do. This was back in 2019, so yeah, yeah, no, monkeys are not so cute anymore. Um, I remember our first encounter with monkeys on stream. They, they threw rocks at us and started chasing us. Also that shard, also hi by the way, how are you? I was thinking about you the other day. I was like, oh, where's shard in the dark? <laughs> um, yeah, on top of the 4G issue, shard, on top of that, it was the hottest recorded uh, season in years and there was a horrible heat wave when was it It was after TwitchCon Berlin so it was like end of April um, and it was like 50 plus degrees Celsius um, so our we were also afraid that our gear would overheat and then we, when we ended up in Vietnam in the summer that time, the, the heat wave was kind of in this part of the world in general. Vietnam, our, our gear was overheating and we almost thought we were gonna lose the camera because it was like flashing warning signs and stuff on the, on the camera. So it was like, oh, okay, shit, like. So yeah, there were two major things that were sort of against us for that India trip. Hi, Cast Studios, how are you? There was a case in India where two monkeys revenge killed more than 250 dogs with gauze killed an infant monkey. And only two? Wow, that's insane. All monkeys are evil. <laughs> it's like proper planet of the apes. Wow, that's insane. I, I didn't hear that story but I can honestly I can see that I, I'm not I'm not even in any disbelief you know <laughs> yeah you got to be careful with the monkeys don't provoke them um so I think the one main thing that if you do want to go to a place where there are monkeys around like you know it's their area it's their territory it's their their home too you gotta just kind of be respectful of their space uh well that firstly um don't provoke them you know like i think uh if you are going to an area where there are monkeys there's a few things you can do to prevent them from like kind of going ape shit on you uh, don't carry food don't carry plastic bags with you because that they associate with food because they have people like carry food in plastic or something so just don't don't bring anything like that don't wear jewelry accessories shiny things that they can kind of yank at and yoink at and like be attracted to uh, yeah keep your belongings like don't I'll, I, I'll have to put my phone away like I won't be able to let it hang like this right just like just be super <laughs> and don't look them directly in the eye don't look at them directly because that in sort of like body language communication is like I'm threatening you so don't look at them directly in the eyeballs because that they might take that as a threat and then they might attack you know what I'm saying <laughs> 
Yeah. You had a gorilla at a zoo try to throw a stone at you? Oh my god. Yeah. Are you serious, Jordy? I've never seen that before. I've never seen monkey uh, fling any feces. <clears throat> yeah, no glasses, like nothing that can be like taken, stolen, like. So we, yeah, we'll need to, so tomorrow when we go to the actual monkey temple, um, we're gonna have to like <laughs> prepare, prepare ourselves, dress accordingly as well. Maybe I won't wear makeup. Maybe my sparkly eyeshadow would be too much to trigger them. <laughs> Just be completely bare, you know. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> so yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so today it's just gonna be kind of the pre, pre Monkey City. We're traveling there today. Uh, it's about getting on the train, getting off at Lopburi Station, walking to our hostel, checking in, dropping off our bags, taking a moment <laughs> to settle in. Um, maybe we'll have time to visit like one of the smaller temples in the area. So uh, Lupuri actually also has ancient ruins much like this. So we will see a lot of uh, more ancient ruins around. So if you liked that vibe this past two days, we will be seeing more of that in the next two days just in Monkey Town. So we will have the cool ancient ruins Lara Croft background but on top it's like it's like a level two now you know we did the temple raiding without any like enemies and now we're gonna now we're gonna go to tem temple raid ancient temple raiding but with monkeys on top of it <laughs> yeah so we're, we're moving to level two now of this uh, ancient city <laughs> in Thailand game basically <laughs> so yeah next is Lara Croft versus Monkey King mm. do you guys remember that game Monkey Island Monkey Temple or oh, was that a board game do you guys know what I'm talking about I'm pretty sure Monkey Temple was some sort of game does anyone is anyone familiar with what I'm saying I don't know if I'm making any sense I don't know <laughs> but yes anyway monkey monkey city today guys um, I'm sat here with a coffee I'm, I'm actually low-key trying to hype myself up a little bit <laughs> so it's monkey island right I played that as a kid I, I did okay okay so I'm not completely crazy so there is a monkey island game cool A chimp simulator game. So like you'd be a chip. You're like living the life of a chimp. <laughs> Survival game. So you're like, you have to like protect your territory and your family and find a female monkey and <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> I feel, is that like, is that live music? I don't know if you guys can hear that. <clears throat> I feel a bit stuffy today. Ugh. Hi, Fury. Ah, yes, we had a pretty good day off. Um, it was pretty, it was super hot yesterday, so, and I was really exhausted from Sunday's stream. I had, I'm pretty sure I had like a tiny bit of heat exhaustion yesterday. I had a sunburn. Um, I don't know if you can tell on my face today. <laughs> um, so yeah, yesterday was all about just kind of resting. Like we just planned our, our planned our trip for tomorrow, today and tomorrow. Um, and we just sort of chilled and enjoyed being here for another day just relaxing and just enjoying um, 
being low key. Yeah, it was it was really good. It was a low key day because we're not home in Bangkok, like in our apartment. I didn't feel like I had to run errands or like do laundry or wash the dishes or sweep or like grocery shop or whatever. Like I I went out to look for postcards for some of you guys who had redeemed postcards this weekend, but the postcard shop was closed. Um, so I'll have to just keep my eyes open for postcards. Worst case, I'll find something in Chiang Mai. Um, but you know how it is. Like, if you redeem a postcard, I'll do my best to like find a postcard in the city you guys redeemed it in. But it's just gonna be from Thailand somewhere. It'll be within the theme of what we're doing on stream, like travel-wise. But probably not directly from the city I'm at at the minute because it's getting harder and harder to find actual physical postcards these days because it's not very popular anymore. You know. So it's not something that you see in every single souvenir shop or like 7-Eleven or anything. It's even more and more rare these days, you know? Um, Mafo, thanks so much for gifting a sub to JT, my king. Welcome to the family, JT. Never saw you do daily chores. I don't stream it. Like, I don't stream that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I guess not. <laughs> of course not then. Uh, you know, this, this stream is all about travel. Um, and even as even as a full-time traveler, there are days where I have to do normal everyday IRL things like do laundry and shit, you know. Uh, just because you're a traveler, just because you're a backpacker doesn't mean you can avoid doing laundry. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you don't uh, avoid it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not for the whole dirty backpacker aesthetic. <laughs> Um, of course, that's not the kind of thing that I, I stream. Like, why would you want to watch me do laundry? That's a bit boring. Everyone does laundry. You don't have to see it. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So, uh, as I finish off my coffee, I want to see... Oh, crap. There's that other temple there, but now I can't tell. I think we're just gonna have to walk. Cause it's not necessarily on the map. Oh, here it is. How far are we? Where is this? It's just like a little, wait, what is this? Okay. Yeah. I just wanna go see like, one more temp like ruin temple ruin here that we haven't necessarily seen so we do have a little bit of time it's a three minute walk okay so we'll just go down this way because sunday we went to visit this one behind us and the wat maha tat which is the one with the buddha head that's been embraced by the tree that way I mean, unless you guys want to see that again, like it's pretty, pretty epic. You've seen laundromat streams? <laughs> really? Hey, Captain, how long have I been living this kind of lifestyle? Uh, it's been, um, this, this, this round, the sort of full-time when I went full-time uh, it was six years ago I traveled before uh, but like on and off here and there um, in between like university uh, semesters and things like that and I grew up traveling with my family um, but this this like this time around where I kind of ended up full-time it started yeah, six years ago. So yeah, uh, we, Gaspar and I started traveling full-time together six years ago. We started streaming our life as full-time travelers five years ago. Um, and yeah, we don't really have like a plan to stop anytime soon. Like the idea is, you know, we're, 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 we're gonna keep going on as long as we can really like, see what what the future brings us but in the meantime this is this is what we do <laughs> 
Will I ever get bored of this lifestyle? Oof, that's a really hard question. Um, I don't know. Like, you never know. You know, you never know what life will bring you. You never know. Like, th there's so many things that will change, like, that will change in the world, change in your life, events, things, like, that you can't, um, you can't anticipate, right? Um, and it might completely change your idea of what you want to do or change your motivation or change your goals, you know? You never know. Um, so I can't, for now, I'll say, like, no. I, I don't think I would ever get bored of this lifestyle, but what I do want is to, like, not stay stagnant. Like, I want to continuously, like, add more to our travels. Like, that's why, for example, uh, we started sailing and we wanted to learn how to sail and we wanted to have that sailboat as an addition to our travels and as a new challenge for us as, as travelers, but also a challenge for us as streamers. We want to like push the envelope, not just as streamers, IRL streamers, but like travelers, you know, like no matter what you do in your life, you should continuously challenge yourself and expand your boundaries and go on beyond your comfort zone and not like stay, stay doing the same thing all the time because you it's comfortable, you know? Like you should always try to seek different challenges whether you're a full-time traveler or or in in a big financial company like you know you you know that's why people seek promotions that's why people change change uh, like companies or completely change careers like I think even as humans I think it's really important to continuously challenge yourself and keep your brain like stimulated and not do the redundant thing day in and day out because then that, that's not healthy for us like as people we need to always like challenge our brain you know yeah hi Brandon and Nemo thanks for your 57 months of resub wow OG why do I want to change no 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 it's not environment it's it's everything it's changing environment it's changing like what we do it's it's just about pushing the boundaries getting out of our comfort zone continuing to challenge ourselves going to visit new countries or is it if it's like learning new skills as a traveler like that's why I'm saying like that's why we started sailing like we knew nothing about sailing a boat or living on a boat until we did it on stream with you guys in 2020 you know and that's what I mean like why keep doing the thing you know how to do well add to it add the challenge to it so we're like pros at traveling we're pros at traveling Asia why don't we go somewhere else why don't we add a sailboat to the mix why don't we do this do that so like that's kind of me and Gaspar's motto like our motivation and it's also just to kind of keep you guys entertained and keep you guys on your toes of like, what is the awkward's gonna do next? What are they gonna do next? Because um, I think that's exciting for you guys to watch too. Like, we're excited to try something new as a traveler. You guys are excited to see the new things that we will try out as a traveler. That's why we challenged ourselves when it came to like, not just sailing a boat and streaming it, but like the challenge of equipment. Like we're continuing, continuously trying to like, Add to this the technology of travel streaming and like that's why this year we we sort of like came out with that really innovative way of uh, streaming scuba diving we've got that profession under our belt so like why not use our profession and, and you know add that to our streaming resume you know and we're the only ones who managed to do it in that way that and I think it's the most effective way yeah, still, I think no one else has been able to accomplish diving, scuba diving on stream the way we have this year. Antarctica next. I'm not necessarily pro Antarctica traveling. It's a very fragile environment in the world. And um, now the sort of polar tourism is booming, starting to, to become more and more popular. 
And you know, like it's such a fragile environment that even having people standing on those ice blocks will affect the environment. And as we've seen, it's they're starting to melt even faster since the tourism has moved into Antarctica. My family is okay with my lifestyle. Yeah, they understand. I mean, they're constantly worried about us because we're always moving here, there, doing this, doing that, and and they know that sometimes it's really stressful. It's a very stressful lifestyle. Like, you know, it's hard on your body. It's very exhausting. You're constantly on the go. Sometimes all you want to do is just be in one place and stay home and have that like comfort of like. I can go home to the same bed every single day, but we don't have that very much. And I think my parents, especially my mom, she knows that. Like she's, she's my mom, right? Like I think every mom is going to worry, especially if you're kind of out there, right? <laughs> um, so the monkeys, Todio, yes, we are. We ha are having. We are traveling to Monkey City soon. We're still here, just chilling in Ayutthaya, and we're taking the train this afternoon to Lopuri. Yeah. Have I been to Australia? Not yet. Definitely on the list. Um, and we learned freediving, so we added that exactly, Fury. So we added that to our like underwater skills, freediving. I want to continue to to build that skill for sure. <laughs> yeah so that's the plan um, I'm really disappointed in my coffees today I, it's really weak there's something about the coffee today it's very weak super weak like I don't even feel like finishing it it's just milk <laughs> Like super disappointed. Oh. Well, I guess we can try one last coffee somewhere, maybe at the train station. <laughs> oh. Who knows? Sometimes it just happens. What time is it? Okay, 12.41, so... Okay, chat, do the math for me. Um, we have to be back at the hotel at 2.20, and it is currently 12.40. So we have a good hour, 10 minutes, let's say. Yeah, I need an extra shot of espresso. Whatever. We'll, we'll try, this is my second attempt at coffee today and it's not working. Still not, still not satisfied. I don't know what's going on today. Usually, usually I'm okay with the coffees, but because sometimes it just, it doesn't, doesn't hit me, doesn't hit right. It's just, it's just not working for me today. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I need something dark. I'm, 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 I'm a strong coffee kind of person. I do, do. I'm not a. I don't do heavy cream. I don't do cream. I don't do condensed milk. Not mess. Not if I if I can help it. But I know like Thai style coffee, it's dark strong coffee with condensed milk, and that's okay. Even though it's like super sweet, that's fine. I, I'll live with it. Uh, um, for me, weak coffee is like sinful. Sinful. It's like, can I have some coffee with that milk, please? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's not even that cheap, this one. I, I spent 85 baht on that. Oh, that's a new coffee place. Maybe we'll check it out on our way to the hotel. Do Pai, Thai people drink more coffee than tea? Um, I think 
generally speaking, they have both. They've got Thai tea and coffee. Uh, honestly, it depends on the person. But I think traditionally, I'm not even sure it's a big coffee tea culture, you know? I'm not even sure what is culturally like, traditionally, what do they drink in the mornings? I, I don't even know. But I know like the younger, sort of like hipster crowd of <laughs> in Thailand, just like everywhere in the world, there's a very big coffee culture. But I think coffee is everywhere. Coffee culture is like global, right? And they do, in the north of Thailand, up in the mountains in the north, they grow tea and coffee. So they have their local stuff, which is very good. Oof, you're an energy drink drinker. Ugh. I can't do it. Lemonade? Yeah, honestly, I think uh, Thai, they love their sweet sugary drinks and energy. I mean, do you guys know, fun fact, right? Uh, Red Bull is originally a Thai drink. Red Bull is Thai, so I feel like maybe, yeah, they, they drink energy drinks and like really sugary drinks. Red Bull is an originally Thai product. And the Red Bulls that you get here in Thailand, they're not like the watered down, like weak sauce NA stuff. They come in like tiny little bottles of like, gla like brown glass bottles, super potent, thick liquid, small, like really strong. That's the original Thai formula for Red Bull. The guy who sort of created Red Bull uh, is obviously like a millionaire now. Let's go check this out. What? Plub Plow Chai. I think I butchered the name. Okay, this is like, yeah. So just really small ruin. I've never tried Monster or Red Bull. Juice has always worked. Juice is fine, yeah. Hey activist, how are you? So actually we can see that not every like section is so well preserved. Oh, it's under construction, what? You know, so it's not as very well conserved as like the ones we went to on. Ow! <gasps> ah! Ow, I just kicked a brick. Ouch. Ow, ow, ow. <gasps> Oof. Ouch, ouch. Ow! Hi, Zelda. Ah, fuck, that really hurt. <sighs> oh yeah, it took some skin off. Okay, part of the ancient city is crumbled and I kicked it. I'm gonna put that back. There, I'm gonna help with the restoration. There you go, did my job. Ow, my toe. Ouchies. <laughs> Hi, Sabnak, indeed a Rooney. Wow, that came out, that, that happened. Just let's roll with it. Yes, we are off to the Monkey City today. We're traveling to Monkey City today. Uh, t we're still in Ayutthaya, ancient city, where <laughs> we were exploring uh, Sunday and Saturday. Um, we just have a little bit of time to kill, so we're just kind of chilling out, enjoying the early afternoon. 2.20, we're heading back to the uh, bungalow, picking up our backpacks, heading to the train station, buying our train ticket to Laburi, where we will check into the hostel and settle in. That's uh, Monkey City, AKA Laburi, and get ready. I'm not sure if we'll see monkeys today, but we're just traveling to Monkey City. And then uh, tomorrow Jeez. is our full day that for Monkey City. Oh my gosh! Bumsuri for 20 generously handed you four euros and 97 cents. Thank you so much, Bumsuri. Irie. 
thank you so much for your donation. That means so much. It's the first donation of the week. Super special. It means so much. These days, uh, donations are extremely important for us. Uh, it means we, are, get, we get them immediately, unlike subs and bits, of course. And it's directly helping us with our trip and our travels. Um, so I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Jaywa, thank you for your t ooh, 29 months resub. Thank you. Ooh. Okay, I'm drenched in sweat. Thank you so much. You can tell that this one, this Chetty is not really as in good, good proper shape as the other ones that we visited yesterday uh, or the day before. Train ride's not as long as the train ride from Bangkok to here. So I think it's gonna be just like an hour tops, something like that, really. So, so yeah, even if we don't end up encountering monkeys today, just cause it is a travel day. And by the time we get there, it's gonna be kind of early evening. We're gonna settle in. We have to check into the hotel, uh, settle down, orientate ourselves. Um, we'll go start looking around the ruins and the ancient temples nearby. But the actual big major temple that is surrounded by monkeys, we're leaving that for tomorrow. You know, like today we're anticipating, like we're going into monkey town tomorrow we're there all day doing the full monkey temple run and <laughs> so today is just the intro really because we're traveling there settle in get our bearings you know the whole thing tomorrow full-on monkey city exploration and but you never know it's like i've seen photos and videos of monkey city and there are actually moments where the monkeys are like actually surrounding the streets in the town like in the streets like proper west side story like having their like territorial wars in the middle of the main road that goes into the city and it's like it's just like what the hell mr nobody thank you so much for your six months resub thank you just wanna like take a look at this Buddha statue really quick. Like lots of offerings and stuff. Do you see what's on top? There's like old broken amulets. So like zoom in on this. Do you see there's like markings on these stones? There are like prayers in Sanskrit amulets. Guys, it's, it's March 1st, at least for me, here in Thailand, it's March 1st. <laughs> um, I can't believe it's March already, <laughs> but that means that we've got to work really hard on keeping that sub count up, chat, because it's a new month, we're going to be dropping subs like flies. Uh, we got to keep up that sub count. I already see we're missing, we're, we're now, we're now have to go back to 1,100. Um, got to keep it up chat. We got to, we got to fight it. <laughs> New month. <laughs> really want to see what's in there. Obviously I'm not allowed to climb this, but, um, <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Oof. Oof. Hey Python. All good. How are you? Can we see some offerings in here. Do you think something was buried in there before? It's actually kind of interesting to see the less like popular parts of the ancient city that aren't like touristy because I think it's like they're not as um, 
they, they're not as well paid attention to, like with the whole restoration and stuff. So this is really in its authentic form. Um, and things like this, where it's literally just a base of whatever this building once was, whatever this base used to be, like, I wonder what stood here, like, what was this building once upon a time? Do you know what I'm saying? No, there's no monkeys. We're still, again, guys, we're not in Monkey City yet. We are traveling to Monkey City. We are still in Ayutthaya. Uh, at 2.30, we're gonna take the local tuk-tuk to the train station, buy our ticket, and then we're gonna go to Monkey City. Like today, we're traveling to Monkey City, but we're not there yet. <laughs> Sorry, just like make that clear again. We're still in Ayutthaya. We've got like just some time to kill. So I don't think we'll see monkeys here. Uh, I mean, I've never seen monkeys in this area, but the idea is that we're taking the train to Lopburi, AKA Monkey City, and we'll be, we'll arrive in Monkey City around like 4.30, 5 p.m. Yeah. Corgi Burger, <laughs> thank you so much for your two months resub. Thank you very much. Uh, it's about one hour by train, I believe, Ruhr, so it won't be a very long train trip. It's not going to be too long. It's going to be just enough to enjoy the trip, like to enjoy being on the local train and sort of soaking in that atmosphere. Hello, Johnny. Good afternoon. has really good 4G infrastructure, Moki, and of course our gear helps a lot with sort of like honing that, uh, <laughs> that energy, I guess, that 4G energy. <laughs> Hi, Terry, how are you today? Are there a lot of water monitor, like monitor lizards? Uh, yeah, there's water, there's uh, monitor lizards, dragons, all over Thailand, um, but they do, can like sort of stay around water. So around canals and rivers and things like that. Um, we're a like we're nearby the river here, but a bit too far to see any lizards in these ruins, I, I think. Last night though, we were walking into town. We crossed over the bridge, over the one of the canals, and there was a huge python hunting and swimming in the canal. Oh, it was pretty scary to see. So it was like, we were kind of in the dark, but we saw it like slithering in the water, like hunting, like it really, yeah, hunting. Um, I just wanna know which way to go. Let's go this way. I'm sorry about that. No, it was really fascinating to see. I've never seen a python in the wild like hunting in the water and swimming like that before. So it was really, really cool to see. We were far from it that we didn't feel like scared or anything. We were like on the bridge looking over and it was swimming away as well eventually. Uh, no, I don't stream on Thursdays, Brandon. The days off of stream are Monday, and Thursdays. <laughs> so that's why there was no stream yesterday. Thursdays, no stream. Those are our, the no stream days where I do off stream stuff. Your dad's house in Thailand had a snake. It's very normal. <laughs> it's kind of a usual thing. 
<clears throat> That's great, Johnny. That's really good news to hear. So this is in Belgium. So Belgium is now slowly weaning away from COVID and no more masks. That's really cool. Nice. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I think slowly in Europe and in the States, I think mean Canada too, like if you're outside, no need for mask. I think in some places you still need masks inside, but still in Thailand, you need to wear mask in public all the time. I wonder when they'll stop that. It's fine, we'll see. <laughs> I spend the day off hugging the air con. That was pretty hey, accurate for... That goes to the awkward Hey, thing. oh wow. Oh, thank you. Chicken man generously Wait. handed you four euros <gasps> for help with train, for help with train, for help with train. Thank you so much. Oh, that, that, that's gonna help a lot. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Amaranth Chicken Man. Cheers. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so, so much. That's gonna help a lot with uh, the train ticket that we're gonna buy later today. I'm not sure how much the train ticket will cost us from here to the Monkey City, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be something like 15 baht, like the, the train from Bangkok to here, because it's like the local third class train, right? But when we arrive in Lopuri, please guys, y'all have to remind me to do this. As soon as we arrive, before we leave the train station and head into Monkey City, the one task I have before we leave the train station is to go to the ticket booth and ask them about the night train to Chiang Mai, because that will be our next stop on Wednesday. So basically tomorrow's plan is that we spend the day exploring Monkey City, going to the Monkey Temple, hopefully not getting completely demolished by monkeys, do our best, spend the day there. And then at night, we're gonna take the sleeper train all the way up to Chiang Mai, but it's better to buy those tickets in advance as much as possible. So when I, because I'm gonna be arriving in Lopuri before G, that's the initial idea. I want to go to the ticket stand and directly ask like, okay, tomorrow we wanna take the sleeper train to Chiang Mai. How much is it? Are there seats available? And we also have to ask, cause taking the night train, there's a, the right way to do it. <laughs> this is my tip, top tip to Lula's tip of the day. If you're gonna take the sleeper train uh, in, Thailand, definitely do your best to pre-book as, as, as far ahead as you can, because then you'll get a bit more uh, option with the seats you choose. And you should always try to book a bottom bunk in an air-conditioned uh, car, obviously, right? Wait, I'm gonna cross the road, let's not die. So those seats are always the ones that are taken first because those are the best seats. You always want to try and request a bottom bunk rather than a top bunk because they're a bit wider and therefore more comfortable and also less uh, rocky because as the train like moves and stuff, when you're higher up, you'll feel the movement of the train even more and it's less comfortable. And it's a bit th like more narrower be bed and they keep the lights on. And so when you're up uh, at the top bunk, you're closer to the li lights that are fixed on the ceiling of the train. So honestly, it's always better to pay a little bit more I don't know what the exact price difference is. Not that much, I don't think, but definitely better to request and book the bottom bunks because they're more comfortable. 
less rocky, more space. And at night, it's a bit darker. You can kind of hide a bit better. So yeah. <laughs> it's too hot, isn't it, puppy? I know. I know. <laughs> I'm not sure how much the sleeper train will cost. I've never taken it from Lubori to Chiang Mai. So, hmm, we shall see. We will find out. It's gonna be our adventure, our first mission when we arrive in Monkey Town. <laughs> Actually, you know what, chat? Since we're walking this way, I think I want to see if we can go get postcards. Maybe the postcard place is open. Yeah, you need to be fully vaccinated to travel a lot of places. Like, uh, they require, like, not everywhere, but there's many things, especially if it's like events, bars, restaurants, festivals. Like, for example, the night we arrived here on Saturday, there was that big, like, outdoor festival thing going on. Um, <laughs> we had to show our full, like, fully vaccinated certificate. It's not required everywhere in Thailand, but it obviously means you're a little bit more free and to travel just generally speaking as a truck wow these birds are angry birds of paradise <sighs> g's fully vaccinated johnson johnson and johnson is a one dose vaccine to be considered fully vaccinated then if you want a booster so with Pfizer and Moderna and stuff two two shots equals fully vaccinated with Johnson it's one now we're looking into booster shots right oh, oh. that guy was screaming at me I don't know why the birds of paradise here the last few days have been really really intense But yeah, these days I think it's becoming more and more difficult to have a Johnson without a booster because their countries are slowly saying that it's not enough. I don't know. Well, anyway. If I donate US, do you get access to it right away? Yes. Every, every donation that we get via PayPal, doesn't matter in what currency you decide to donate to it. Uh, hold on, hold on guys, wait, distracted. Um, <laughs> yeah, so any, any donation that you choose to make for the, to the stream, we will get right away. Doesn't matter what currency. But be, just to be aware, like, say you donate in US or whatever, it will pop up on screen in Euro just because that's our bot conversion. So, <sighs> what time is it? Should we go in? Yeah. Okay, first thing I'm gonna check to see if the postcard place is open. No, it's not. Okay. Is it like only open on weekends? See, it's only a few of these shops that are open. Hmm. <laughs> oh well. Hippie store. Souvenirs. Tourist souvenirs. Including those pants that you see everywhere. <laughs> It was like elephant pants. Oh my gosh. Can you see the sweat dripping down my face? <laughs> uh, this way. So, 
Let's go into the big temple chat. Why not? We've got some time, let's enjoy it. One last look at Wat Mahatat. This is actually where we were on Sunday at one point with the, ba with the Bodhi tree uh, embracing the Buddha head. Uh, who in chat was here for that on Sunday? Raise your hand. But I think it's special enough to go see again second time. So I'm gonna pay 50 baht entrance. We've got a good hour, so we're okay. Yeah, bicycle parking space. Lots of parking space in this one, so. Hmm. Do you think I can break a 1,000? I can ask, but might not be. You know what, I'm not gonna do it. Maybe I'll go to a cafe. I need to break a large bill, chat. Don't have small change, it's gonna be an issue. But I doubt that they'll be helpful here. So what do you have? What do you have? All you want? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 50 baht. Oof. Guys, I'm overheated. Uh-oh. I'm beeping. Hi, White Fu. What's up? Hey, Snake. Hey, Too Awkward. Oh. I am dripping in sweat. What the hell's going on today? These last few days, it's like my body is just not adjusting. <laughs> I'm gonna actually stop for a moment and get a, yeah, get a water break. <laughs> I can't, I just can't. <sighs> water break here, chat. Yes. The temperature check was like, beep, beep. It was 37.5. That's, whoa. It's too hot today, chat. <laughs> I feel like it's getting hotter and hotter every day. <sighs> okay. Do you guys have an okay view there while I hydrate? Probably put my hat on too then. Yes. You can see that some of these stupas and chedis and whatnot, these structures on this compound are leaning. Um, because obviously over time the earth is shifting so the foundation of these structures that are like several hundred years old now um, are starting to shift under the earth exactly what happened to for example the leaning tower of Pisa in Italy right um, oof, it's so hot my hand sanitizer is like really running and it just kind of exploded everywhere. Shoot. <gasps> so just gushing out. Ah, that's really gross. <laughs> Whew. How's my gear doing? Of course, it's hot. Yeah, definitely need to hydrate. Especially if I'm gonna need to find another cup of coffee because <sighs> I don't know what it was today, but so far I've had no good luck. Very rare. Yeah, I need to find another one of those fan thingies, too awkward. I've been seeing a couple of locals walk around with a new design, which is really good. It's a necklace, and the fan is like just that big. And it sits on your neck here, and the fan points up and blows into your face. So you don't have to hold it or anything. It's just on your neck blowing, which I think might be more comfortable than the one that I had that goes over your neck. I'll have to find out where to buy that. Wonder how much they cost. They look like they are better technology too, like a lot, like better quality. <laughs> so maybe it won't break after like two or three uses too. That would be really nice. All right, 
put my glasses away, wear my hat. I feel like it's another day where I can definitely get sunburnt really badly if we're not careful. I have to put some sunscreen on my arms later, I think. <sighs> How's the toe? Let's see. Eh. I don't think I'll need to amputate it. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> Oof. All right, let's go. So we're heading to one of the most popular spots in this temple. Amongst these ruins. So if you weren't here during that part of the afternoon on Sunday stream, you'll have a chance to see it now. It's really, really beautiful, really worth it. It's so magical, this thing. Um, <laughs> this is one of the most like popular temple grounds amongst the ruins here in Ayutthaya. I'll have to interrogate them too awkward, yeah. So when the Burmese came in and, and uh, invaded the city in the mid 1700s they came and pillaged the whole place broke and and like decapitated all of these buddhas all the buddha statues in all of these temples and palaces and stuff were beheaded that's why you'll see all of them pretty much not just because they're ruins and they collapsed over time but when the city collapsed during invasion, these Buddhas were literally decapitated. So the story with this tree here, well, nature, you know, kind of reclaimed its territory over these hundred years. There, no one knows exactly what happened here. So this is kind of the sort of speculation, the mystery, the myth, if you will, behind the Bodhi tree and the Buddha head. So wait for the locals. Everyone comes to take photos in front of this phenomenon, because it literally is a phenomenon. But so um, when the Burmese came and invaded, they came and pillaged the city and one of the things they did was like they came and raided all of the treasuries the temples stripped everything of its value beheaded all the buddhas only a few were, like kind of remain intact like this one for example and so they were carrying all their loot away and i guess here we you know when the arche archaeologists came and sort of started excavating and researching and studying these ruins, they found this. This Buddha head embraced in the roots of this Bodhi tree. The Bodhi tree is actually a sacred symbol and they believe that spirits live inside this tree. So they were like, oh my God, what happened here? Like how how did this happen? How, how did this tree sort of grow around this head? And you can t see like, it was kind of lifted up off the ground and like embraced almost, right? <laughs> so here we are and we're looking at this like, okay, how did this happen? So the, the sort of myth, the mystery behind it is that as the Burmese kind of pillaged and kind of carried away their loot from the city after they finished invading. Of course, they couldn't carry everything away. So this Buddha head was dropped on the ground and left behind and just forgotten. And it was just here on the, on the ground by this wall. And over the hundreds of years, as the city was forgotten, as it be started to crumble down more and more, as it be turned into an ancient ruin over these years before the archeologists came and showed an interest to this place, this Bodhi tree decided to reclaim 
you know how like nature reclaims its territory so it started growing over this wall and it grew on this wall and found the Buddha head and picked it up in its roots and embraced it and now it's being protected by nature <laughs> So now the Buddha head is being protected by nature. Very pretty. And it's so, so popular, a very popular place to visit. People come to like pay its respect, come pray, um, <laughs> and to sort of make sure that it's protected and people don't go too close to this sacred, ancient thing. They built this platform and roped off in front of the grass. So it's like, please sit there and take your selfies. Don't go any closer to the tree. <laughs> but yeah, during like high touristy season, like pre-COVID times, this place was the top tourist sort of area. Out of all of the places that you can come visit here, this of course was one of the most popular spots to visit in the ancient city and 